Hi guys, welcome back. It's Christy again. So, you may remember, I guess it was about a month or so ago now, I did a tutorial on painting a French uh, cuirassier, and I think that worked out really well. I'll link to it actually below in the description box if you want to check that out. But I guess I was so pleased with the results, I thought, hey, why not go ahead and paint a whole regiment of them? And okay, before you think I'm totally crazy here, there's probably an explanation in order because the regimen that I'm talking about painting is only this big. These guys are uh, French Napoleonic cuirassiers from uh, Bacchus Miniatures and these are only six millimeters, really, really tiny. Um, and I've had actually several user requests before on how to paint six millimeter figures. So I thought, you know, this was as really good a time as any. And basically like any other scale out there, uh, there are tips and tricks and techniques that are, you know, useful for getting the best results that you can. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to show you uh, how you can kind of get the most out of one of the really, I guess, smallest wargaming scales out there. Okay, so first of all, here are all the paints you're going to be needing to paint this group of little guys. And I know it looks like an awful lot for such small figures, but remember, even though we're not going to be using a lot of shades of the same color, we still have to complete a complete horse and rider, and there's just a lot of different parts of equipment, and they're all different colors, so that's why you need so many different paints here. Okay, so I'm going to start off here by base coating the horses, and I'm using German Camouflage Black Brown for this because this heavy cavalry should be a very dark brown shade of horse. Uh, even though I have nine figures, I'm only going to focus on this base of five, really, for the painting section of this tutorial because that's really enough to give you an idea of the technique. And then later on, I'll be bringing back in the other four. Now one of these um, horsemen is a cursor trumpeter, so he gets to be painted a little bit different than the rest. Uh, and one thing is he has a white horse instead of a brown one, so I'm base coating this horse using Vallejo Neutral Gray. And now to start highlighting, I've got Vallejo Burnt Umber here, which is sort of a medium gray shade. It's very, very important when you're working at this scale that the steps you make between the colors need to be really, really big. You, you're going for super high contrast here because anything else is not going to show up. So this, if you like subtle painting, this is not the place for it. Burnt Umber, as a matter of fact, I thought was really not enough contrast in the end with the German camouflage black brown but because the horses are a fairly large area of these models I didn't mind making sort of three highlights on them. I made a second highlight for the trumpeter's horse here using Vallejo sky gray and when you're doing this you really just want to sort of try to pick out the individual elements of the horse as best you can. There's no blending here in case you couldn't tell, just about sort of defining individual elements and trying to leave some of that darker undercolor in between the areas to help just define separate areas. But you're not necessarily going to be able to do a really good job on every figure because the sculpting uh, varies a lot more with these guys, so some of them may have really well-defined, uh, rel relatively for the size anyway, well-defined parts, while others may be kind of messed up and you'll just have to, you know, throw some color on there. Uh, now I have a, a sort of a third layer for the brown horses, and I'm using uh, brown sand here from Vallejo, and I'm just doing the same thing I did with the burnt umber, picking out sort of individual areas and trying to leave darker areas in between. And because we've got three colors on the bodies of the horses, that means you can do a, a, some slight more variance than you would normally. But again, I, I really wouldn't recommend that you go for uh, three colors most of the time on six millimeter. It's just pointless. And now the white horse got a third uh, level as well, and that's just with white paint. Because you're dealing with a light color, you may find you need to go back over some of the areas a couple times to get enough uh, coverage, but that will vary. Usually I find when you're working this small, you're applying really small concentrated dabs of paint and the issue with sort of paint not, you know, covering well is less of a problem. 
Now I've got some black paint out and I'm doing several things at once here. Uh, one thing I'm doing is painting the manes and tails of the brown horses with this color. And the other thing is I'm painting their reins and tack uh, where you can see them. So they're sort of their bridles and all that kind of thing. Uh, and that requires a little bit of careful detailing work because you've got some fine lines. So you want to make sure your black paint is really thin. I just wanted to point this out kind of right now. Uh, sometimes when you're painting a lot of figures like this, the temptation is going to be to try to do everything on the figure that's one color and then, you know, do the everything else that's another color because that's a good way to organize things and sufficient with paint. But I, I recommend you don't try to do that with six millimeter figures just because they're sm so small and you're working in such tiny spaces that it's going to be really, really hard to do that without uh, then having to go back in with another color and subsequently kind of ruin your work. So what's more intelligent when you're working at this scale is really to think about sort of layers and what's sort of a lowest layer, paint that first and then move up to the next highest layer and so on and so forth. So the horse, that was kind of the lowest layer thing. Then you've got sort of some harnesses over top of that. You've got uh, then the bridle and the saddle and saddle blanket on top of that. And then you've got your rider on top of that and so on and so forth. And, and within all those things, you could even break them down further, but you should try to just paint things in sort of layers of what's on top of what, and that way you'll avoid uh, making a mess when you go back in and paint other colors. Next, I'm gonna just really quickly dab some uh, sort of small highlight bits of burnt umber onto the brown horses, manes and tails. Now with the white horse, I also wanted the mane and tail to be darker, so I just made sure they were base coated with the, that neutral gray that I used on the rest of the horse, and that that was nice and clean and tidy. And now I'm going in with some non oil wash, and I'm using that to sort of darken them and also sort of define down in the sort of of kind of sculpting of them. And I'm also going to use that Nolan oil wash at the same time to sort of darken the base of the white horse's feet because you sort of get that muddy effect at the bottom. I'm just going to build up a couple of layers there. Next, I'm going to highlight all that leather tack. I've taken some of the Vallejo Neutral Gray again. I've got it really thin, and I'm just making very thin, light lines sort of in the centers of all those black areas. And it seems like it's a really light color over top of the black, but remember we're doing leather here, so it's just kind of going to look shiny, and it works pretty well, I think. Now, the front part of the saddle is covered in kind of a fur bit. Uh, and that's usually kind of a white for a bit. So I'm base coating all of that again with the neutral gray, just as the first layer. And then just to keep it a bit distinct, I'm going to go over and add a highlight here of the sky gray. So we'll end up with just a very sort of light gray colored fur. Now onto the saddle blanket, which should be a very deep blue. I've taken dark Prussian blue from Vallejo and I've mixed it with black as the base coat. And I'm just covering up the, so that whole area of the saddle blanket. And you can also do the back edge of the of sort of his bed roll, sleeping roll, because that has sort of a blue stripe on it. Or you can come back in and do that later. Now I've got some pure Vallejo blue and I'm going to use that to highlight the blue areas of the saddle blanket. I know it's a very, very bright blue relative to what was real, but remember you want really, really high contrast here, even if it's not strictly re uh, realistic. If we did not make such a big jump in color, you would not be able to see anything. Okay, so now most of that bedroll and sort of the trim on the saddle blanket is going to be white. So again, I'm going to be base coating those areas using um, neutral gray. Now the ends of that saddle blanket would have a little blue square normally with the regiment number on it, but this is just so small that you're almost certainly not going to be able to show that little blue square. Sometimes you can, and if it's possible, great, go, go for it. Otherwise, you can just leave kind of a white square or a white side to the saddle or the bedroll, and it really isn't going to matter a whole lot. And now I'm just going to go back in with white and highlight that uh, the blanket trim and also the bedroll on sort of its sides and top.
All right, now I've got some Vallejo Black Red, and I'm going to do two things with it here. I, the bottom of that sort of fur on the front of the saddle has sort of red trim, so I'm going to base coat that. And then along the back sort of edge of that bedroll, there's, there's kind of a red stripe, so I'm going to apply a red stripe along there as well. And now I'm going to grab Evil Sun's Scarlet from Citadel, and I'm going to use that to apply a really bright highlight layer, just go right over those red areas that I just painted. At this point, I'm mostly done with the horses and their tack, so I'm going to sort of start working on the riders. The first thing I'm going to be doing uh, is painting their pants and their gloves. And, I, and my base coat layer for those is going to be khaki because I want it to be a more sort of slightly warm cream color. Their pants actually don't really show very much, but there's a few little bits where you might want to paint. But they have these big uh, uh, gloves for protection, so those are getting this sort of khaki base coat. And then in order to highlight the pants, and particularly the gloves, wherever they're showing, I'm going to just dab on some kind of small dots of Vallejo Ivory, because again, it's almost white, but it's got that slight warmth to it that I want in these areas. I'm going to do their faces now really quickly. I'm just base coating those areas using uh, brown sand, and I had to put in a couple layers to get good coverage, but that's it. And, and don't sh skimp on the paint here. Feel free to cover areas that aren't actually going to be brown later because it's just easier at this point. And then like I do with bigger figures, I'm going to apply a nice heavy wash here of Reichland Flesh Shade to the faces, which will just help define the eyes and, uh, and the mouth and stuff better. In order to highlight the skin, I've got some Iraqi sand, which is the color I use on bigger figures, and I'm going to apply it uh, not exactly the same way, because some of the, the, the sculpting quality of the faces here varies. Some of them are almost indistinguishable faces, and some of them are very, very well sculpted for their size. So what I try to do when I can is really just dot the color, particularly on the nose and the lips, and any area where I can really pick out or kind of distinguish what I'm painting, and just kind of make sure that you get some darker areas and some lighter areas on the faces, basically, I'd say. I'm now going to work on the jackets, and they should really be that same color as the saddle blanket. So again, I mixed up black and dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. Now because these guys are wearing cuirasses, there's not all that much blue showing. You're really only going to see it on their sleeves and a little bit on sort of the tails of their coats. So you just want to base coat that in series. Don't, don't forget that the uh, trumpeter is going to look a little bit different, so you do not need to paint his coat blue at this point. And then just like uh, I did with the saddle blanket, I'm grabbing the pure Vallejo blue again, and I'm just going to use it to add some highlights to the um, sleeves and turn backs or the tails on the jackets. Now, I am painting these as the first regiment of Curs Curassiers because that's just easier. So I've got some Vallejo Black Red here, and I'm going to use that to base coat the turnbacks and sort of the collars on these guys. Now, there would be other areas painted red, but they just don't show at this scale, so that's mainly what you need to worry about. And the trumpeter, I'm also going to paint his jacket red. Um, the earlier style trumpeter uniform, they just had reverse colors, so red jacket, blue trim. Later on, they wore green jackets instead, but I'm going with that earlier variant just because I didn't want to have to get yet another color uh, just to paint the trumpeter with. This, it just, this just simplifies the whole process. Now I'm again going to take Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel and use it to apply a highlight to the turnbacks and collars on all the normal troopers. And on the trumpeter, I'm going to use that to paint his entire jacket. Now, you often see the trumpeters w were not always wearing cuirasses like the other guys were. They just had on a red jacket with white trim. So you can just go ahead and paint the whole area if you're going to follow that format. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do on the trumpeter is give him uh, blue uh, turnbacks and a blue collar since he's reversed from the other guys. And I still have wet, uh, dark blue and light blue paint laying around so I can just quickly go in and take care of those areas. You're also going to want to remember to paint the epaulets on most of your guys. The color will vary depending on whether trumpeters or officers or normal units. The normal guys mostly wear red though. 
Now I'm going to start working on the steel and metal areas. I have made a base coat here by mixing black and a bit of uh, Vallejo air steel so I get kind of a dark grayish metallic color. There's a fair number of areas you need to pay attention to. Obviously when you're painting the figures with this layer, uh, so a good part of their helmets are going to be a steel. You want to get their swords, of course. Also their cuirasses that should go without saying and also the scabbards of their swords are all going to be wanting to be base coated in this color if you want to try and paint their stirrups you can also do that too i decide not to in the end but it's it's usually clearly enough sculpted if you feel like doing that I'm now just going to go back in with pure Vallejo Air Steel, which is very, very shiny. And you can see I'm just going to highlight all those areas that I just painted. The blade, the helmet, the scabbard, um, you know, anything that you really want to be shiny. The cuirass, of course. And I'm, it's really, again, this is really just about dotting on the paint. Now I'm going back in with black because there were some areas that... As I kind of said earlier, you have to pay attention to layers, and there were some areas that I didn't think were a good idea to do earlier on, but now that we've finished more of the model, it's okay. So uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing here is painting uh, the, the soldier's boots. Um, I'm also going to be painting the plume on their helmet, and they've also got sort of a fur um, front to the helmet. I'm going to be painting that now as well since the steel is done. I can go over top of it. And finally there's these little thin straps that bind the bedroll at the back and I'm going to be painting those on carefully as well. Just as very thin little stripes. Now I'm going to do a little bit of combination highlighting. I'm going to highlight the leather areas I just painted, so the boots and those straps on the bedroll uh, using the Vallejo Neutral Gray again. And then for the um, plume and that fur on the helmet, I'm going to take some of Vallejo German Gray and lighten it just a hair, or you don't even have to at all, it's up to you. And I'm going to use that just to put a very slight highlight on that fur and hair. Now for the brass and gold areas. I've started out here with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and a bit of Vallejo Air Gold as a base coat. And there's various places you need to kind of detail with this color. Uh, the helmet, for example, has quite a lot of gold trim, like that sort of top crest, the strap holding it on. Those are all gold, and there's a little flange around the top, too, that you're going to want to do gold. It, it kind of really depends on how well you can see what you're painting, how much you do. Uh, I also did sort of the the handles and grips of the swords where I saw them in uh, gold as well. And the tops, sort of where the um, cuirasses clip on, or sort of the straps that hold them on, are sort of covered in sort of gold or brass too. So you kind of want to paint a sort of a gold stripe over all of your um, soldier's shoulders. Also, when you're painting the trumpeter, don't forget that he's going to get a gold or kind of brass trumpet as well. So that's kind of a special area that you're going to want to pay attention to. And now I'm just going to grab the pure Vallejo Air Gold and just go back off over all those areas. I just base coat it and apply a shiny um, gold highlight to them as best as I can. Uh, things like the straps on the helmet are going to be particularly important because you really see those. But, you know, just pick out all the areas you can kind of easily reach and where you want to really put some extra emphasis. I had to go back in once I was done here also and kind of reapply paint to the kind of fur or the hair plumes just because it tends to get rubbed off when you're doing this. Now my final thing I want to do is there's some kind of white areas that still need to be detailed on the models. All the figures have sort of a belt and also sort of a strap over their shoulder that's going to be white. So I'm again taking neutral gray and painting that shoulder strap and also the belt where it shows. And on the uh, trumpeter I'm going to paint some sort of lace and also his epaulets in white. I'm then going to just grab white paint and use that to highlight those same areas as best as I can. I didn't show it because it was on the other base, but I also had an officer figure and I gave him sort of white silver epaulets as well. So you're going to have to kind of pay attention to what your figures are and based on that you can kind of figure out where you need to apply different colored epaulets. 
So now I have finished painting all of the figures and I'm going to take them off those bases that I used when I was painting. I'm going to put them on something more permanent. This is just something I had laying around that's basically the right length and obviously the way I'm basing them is not quote unquote the right way to base and that's going to be based on your rule set and what you want to do and all kinds of other factors. So definitely don't take this as gospel. I just decided to do them kind of in a row with the trumpeter and the officer in the middle. Uh, I'm not saying that's correct or anything at all. That and That's just handy for this purpose. So what I'm doing here is just taking some super glue and just sort of sticking them down and trying to get them in a sort of a nice even row as best as I can. And making sure of course that there's not too much space between them and they're pretty evenly divided. I've got here a mixture of kind of white glue, brown paint, a lot of sort of sand and grit, and I just keep that pre-mixed for basing purposes. And I've got a really old brush, a really small brush too, I should point out, because you need that to get between the figures. And I'm gonna just use that to apply kind of a muddy goop layer all around and in between the figures as carefully as I possibly can. And this will have to dry quite a bit under normal circumstances, though because I was in a hurry, I sped it up with a hairdryer, which worked pretty well, but it won't get you all the way. You're still going to have to leave it to sit for at least a couple of hours. Now, even though it's not really going to show a whole lot, I still like to dry brush the bases of my figure. So I've got some Vallejo brown sand here, and I'm just kind of lightly applying it around the sort of bumpy areas of the figure's base. And I added even more extra sort of detail and dimension to the dry brushing by taking a bit of um, Iraqi sand and applying another light dry brush layer. At this point I'm using again my really small kind of crappy brush to carefully apply watered down white glue around all the figures. I'm covering up most of the areas of the base that I dry brush just because it's really not that pretty and it's not that worth showing. Because these figures are so small scale, I am applying flock to their base, and so say static grass, which is just too big, and it would just look weird on uh, or with figures of this scale. So I have this box of flock here that's kind of a mix of different colors I can just kind of dip the models in. Now if you want to add interest to your base, you've got the same problem because like traditional clumps that you glue onto a lot of bases are not really going to work here. They're going to be way out of scale. So what I'm using here is sort of clump pull apart foliage, which you can pull apart into teeny tiny little bits and you can kind of use a toothpick and a bit of super glue that you dip them in to kind of apply them to the base and add little extra bits of shrubbery. And you can make this look even more interesting if you use different colors or if you've got even some bright colored ones to kind of mimic flowers. But I'm going to keep it really simple in this case. Okay, so here is our finished base or regiment or whatever you want to call it, a six millimeter Napoleonic Carassiers. Um, this was a really interesting project for me to paint. It's certainly not like anything I've done. And I have, I mean, I've done things like in 10 millimeter and 15 millimeter and all that before. And there's a lot of the same things hold true. But when you're doing six millimeter, it's just all of those sort of things are exaggerated to the max. I mean, there's really no space here for blending. Uh, you really don't need a lot of different colors. It's really all about just kind of one really super dark base and then a really light color over top for contrast. And you do that in pretty much 90% of the areas on these models. But I had a lot of fun painting and they went really fast. This is super easy. I painted these to a pretty high standard for six millimeter, but I think um, they still didn't really take me all that much time in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I've also included a shot in here just for fun to show you what uh, these guys look like in comparison to say a 28 millimeter Carrassier. And you can see what a great big difference it is. Kind of scary, huh? So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please share it. Uh, leave me comments with what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, please subscribe to my channel, of course, if you haven't uh, done so already. And uh, I guess I'll see you next week.